Hello everyone, back to tuning into today's second video. We're going to have a look at weather. For the 14 days for today's second video, day 10 will take us to the 20th of March. And we'll be able to set up beyond that with the excellent GFS. The show on Subbles. They run to other couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Gets us into first half of April. And I shall get on with that for you in a moment. Just say that first. A video sales at 6 UK weather forecast. So like, share, and subscribe on both of today's videos. And and uh, thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. For Gals well, thank you so much, everyone. Right, we're going to start off in the strap. We are confirming today that a major technical sudden stratospheric warming has taken place. This is from uh, the JMA showing how temperatures have been forming through the season at 10 HPA in the stratosphere over the North Pole and where we currently are. So through most of the winter, the temperature at 10 HPA in the strap was colder than average. We had our first minor warming of the stratosphere that occurred in the uh, earlier part of February, then we went cold again. However, a sudden stratospheric warming has taken place, and we've now lifted the temperature from about minus 60 to minus 20. So we've gone up about 40 degrees in the space of uh, two or three days there over the uh, North Pole. If we go a little bit low down to 30 HPA, this is how the current looking looks even more dramatic uh, there, doesn't it? We have gone from about minus 75 up to about minus 27 something like that so again lifted the temperature uh, by many many degrees by about 50 degrees there at 30 hpa and uh, as i say this uh, this you know is a technical ssw the most of winter temperature at uh, 30 hpa was colder than average and at one point around the beginning of february we was down close to minus 90 unbelievable this is how temperatures are currently looking at 10 hpa over the uh, north pole so again we've got, we've got these orange colors here that penetrating in penetrated in from russia and siberia into the pole the stratospheric polar vortex is now displaced through uh, North America, the Atlantic, and into uh, Western Europe as well. Um, now, the next few days, we level off that warming a little bit, but around the middle of March, we're going to get a renewed warming that appears over uh, Russia. And again, that penetrates towards the North Pole and towards uh, Greenland this time uh, as well. So that's just going to re-enhance, reinforce uh, this uh, first SSW, really, and probably send the zone of wind uh, into further, into reverse. Now, we're going to extend range. We split the PV and basically destroyed it, obliterated it at this point. And that's how we're going to get to the end of the, the GFS 6. Um, no pack signs of yet another warming appearing over the bed and started to push it off in towards uh, Russia. PV, suspect polar vortex, is basically gone at that point. And of course, the technical definition of a major sudden stratospheric warming event is that you uh, reverse the zone wind at 10 HPA 60 degrees north and we have indeed uh, now done that so this is coming from weather is cool dot com you can see that the blue line which um shows where we've been where we currently are uh, with the uh, zone of wind has uh, fallen away this is the uh, zero line just here and uh, the blue line is now underneath that. So, yes, we have indeed reversed the zone of wind. And that means we have had and are having a technical sudden stratospheric warming event. GFS Ensemble showing that the zone of wind is going to weaken further. Then try to come back up. Then it's going to drop again as we get that second uh, warming into uh, the middle part of March. So, major SSW is confirmed here. And, of course, now we wait to see what, if any, tropospheric response we get. Trop tropospheric response through Norman Brockton. Normally, you get this at 10 and 30 HPA, which you have done, of course, the SSW. Um, normally, you do get a tropospheric response. The tropospheric response will be probably in two to three weeks. So, uh, we're going to wait and see how that uh, plays out. And we will, of course, keep you updated. You don't always get a tropospheric response. So, we'll wait and see. 
Right, so latest temperature observations from XC Weather shows that we're still clinging on to warmth down in the cell. We've got 17 degrees there at Fourney Island, but going further north into the Midlands, it's a lot cooler now there, colder even. It's just 7 degrees at Church Lawther, 9 degrees at Nottingham, 7 degrees at Leeming, only 5 degrees at Reddersdale Camp, and at 5 degrees at Aviemore and Belfast is at 9 degrees. So the warmth is in the south. Wales still 11 degrees, so just about clean on, real at 14 degrees. But those colder temperatures are moving across the country from the north and from the north east. I don't think we'll be reaching 17 degrees again uh, on the south coast for a few days. Latest wind from that from earthnoldschool.net shows that those uh, northeast winds are setting in across the country. Um, losing the uh, warm, uh, balmy southerly winds. They've been pushed off into the continent. And uh, we've got high pressure up towards Iceland and we're in a blocking area of high pressure up there. Remember, this isn't uh, a response to the SSW. This is something different. This is just part of, I think, I think it's just an ongoing continuation of a pattern we've had on and off through the winter since Christmas. And the new year, we've been seeing uh, periods of blocking uh, appearing around Green Greenland and Iceland. Never been uh, able to produce anything too cold uh, and wintry, but, uh, you know, blocking has been coming and going throughout winter. And I think this is a re-emergence of, uh, of that, to be honest, rather than a direct response to the uh, stratospheric warming. Central temperature is currently sitting at uh, 8 degrees, 8.0, that's 2.3 degrees above 61 to 99 average. It's provisional to yesterday, to the uh, 9th of March. I think that's as high as it's going to get, and uh, that will start dropping, I think, from tomorrow. These were GFS upper air temperature precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're at Darwin today. So the red line is the first year upper air temperature average for Darwin. Starting above average, still just with the upper air temperature, but they're falling away now. And it will be colder than average through the uh, next week. Bigger recovery in the upper air temperature is taking place then as we move towards the uh, final week of March. Of course, that's a long way off. And is in the unreliable time frame. Precipitation wise, going to be a lot of dry weather over the next week. Maybe a little bit more unsettled heading in towards the last week of March. Temperature anomalies. Next five days are coming out colder than average for the UK and Ireland. And in the 16 day time frame, we're also looking uh, colder than average. 10 to 14 day temperature anomaly though has a bit of a split go slightly above average. So, in the time frame, you expect to start see, seeing a uh, tropospheric response to a strap warming. Actually, the GFS is warming things up, um, which is a little bit confusing, but there we go. I say you don't always get a tropospheric response to a strap warm. Uh, precipitation anomalies up to uh, the next seven days, gets the 17th of March, comes out uh, drier than normal. And in the uh, 8 to 14 day time frame, again, we're a little bit on the drier side. Right, let's start going from chart data. Then let's have a latest UK Met Euro run. It's looking big night on Thursday. Winds in from the north and from the north east. Looking pretty cold. And there could be wintry showers in the north from the east as well. Into the weekend, high pressure gradually slips down over the country. So, I think by day, temperatures will start to uh, lift up in the ever-strengthening March sunshine. But by night, probably still quite cold through the weekend with an ongoing risk of frost. Icon, once more, brings, brings down those north northeast winds on Thursday. They continue into Friday. Then the high pressure slips into the country over the weekend, cuts off the north northeast So by day, temperatures should lift back up to around average. By night, it probably will be, still be quite calm with more night frost possible. And then this is how the KMA is looking. Again, we've got wind in from the north and from the northeast uh, at the end of the week. Then into the weekend, high pressure moves down over the coast. You bring lots of dry weather uh, with it. And then the extended range. Well, the Atlantic has a go at getting back in. Um, but the high pressure fends that off. And we end up looking like that under high pressure. And maybe, I suppose it's about, but maybe by then, we're beginning to ship the wind back around more of a southerly direction. So that could start to lift the temperature back up again, maybe. Maybe uh, possibly back to uh, 16 or 17 degrees. GFS midnight run, all much of a match this Thursday with wind in from the north and from the northeast. Now, remember, high pressure slips down over the country at the weekend, bring a lot of dry but quite cold weather with it. Lower pressure starts coming in from off the Atlantic into next week temporarily. 
before heights begin uh, to build back in again. We're at steady range now. That's 22nd of March. A ridge through the country. Perhaps bring something a bit uh, milder up from the south. And then maybe, this is interesting, this gets us towards late March, 24th March, and we're seeing um, signs of high pressure building around green. That might be the first hint from the GFS of a top of the response to the strap warm. It's a very long way out there. It's over 300 hours away. So, <laughs> got to wait a few days to see whether that uh, keeps up. It could just be the GFS throwing one out there and it's extended. Which it is prone to do, as we know. This is how a GFS uh, 6 set is looking. So, again, winds are in from the north and from the northeast on Thursday. Staying quite cold into the weekend, but uh, probably uh, we'll see the temperature get to, into a bit of a recovery, sort of by day anyway, through the weekend. By night, still quite cold. Next week, again, low pressure starts coming in off the Atlantic, beginning to return back to something uh, more unsettled again. Then, heights building up from the south. So, that's a warmer ridge that starts to lift temperature back up again in the extended range and that high pressure eventually shows that signs are trying to get Scandinavia but really just sits around the country so again this is turning to a very very dry march I've had some wet marches recently but this looks like a much much drier uh, march I have to say um, and again not much of a sign of a tropospheric response to a strap warm there up to the 26th of March if you're enjoying the video, please like, share, subscribe, and share everyone for doing that. And why not drop a comment and let's say uh, about this and all of our videos, content, live streams, etc., etc., etc. And uh, don't forget to hear friends about guys, always get to subscribe to each part on around 25 subscribers, 24, 25, to get ourselves to 19.6k. Uh, so if we're getting closer to 19.6k, if you could give us a sub and tell your friends and family to subscribe, that'd be awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Right, GM, once more with wind in from the north and from the northeast on Thursday. Looking quite cold and a little bit on wintry side through the end of the week. Then into the weekend, high pressure through the country, bring a lot of dry weather, cold by night, a little bit better uh, by day with temperature. And then we get towards day 9 10, we turn more unsettled again as the low pressure start coming in from off the Atlantic. So a slightly more unsettled look, I think, around days 8, 9, and 10 to the weather with the GM. And then lastly, the ECM with those north to north east winds on Thursday into Friday and Saturday. High pressure slipping down over the country, bringing a lot of dry weather in with it. Cold by night, not too bad by day. And then uh, next week, the winds start to be back around to the south again. So it's going to be milder from the south, albeit a little bit showery. The high pressure remains in control, really, right way through to the extended. So a lot of dry weather with the ECM all the way up to about the 25th of March. Uh, high pressure continues to rule the roost. Missing the precipitation forecast are based on that ECM run from Tometia.com. So there's a cold front clearing away to the south right now. Wintry showers coming into uh, the north and the north. So those wintry showers become a little bit more widespread uh, by the time you get through to Wednesday especially for more central east snows. There could be a few flakes of snow here and there. And then we go on into the end of week. Of trend then there's a drain where there's a high pressure slips through the country. Uh, by day 10, though, starting to bring some showery bursts up from the south. These are the options on the table from the East Gem Ensembles today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. Gets us to the 20th of March. 20 members of the ECM Ensembles with high pressure through the country, low pressure down to southwest, and winds coming up from a southerly southeasterly direction. So, uh, going to be a lot of dry weather with that, although the low to the southwest could produce some showery conditions. 10 again with a weak ridge um, from the west to the north and low pressure down to the south. That would bring up showery. South. We've got eight with a high pressure in the Atlantic reaching into this is your rock dry weather with that. We've got seven with high pressure between Iceland and Norway. Lots of dry weather with that. And we've got six with high pressure in the Atlantic. Low pressure is through the North Sea. And winds that are coming in from the north. So that's been most unsettled and coolest option. And then in two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got, and it gets us to the 25th of March. 31 members of the East Channel Ensembles then, with high pressure dominating the weather. Brings a lot of dry weather with it, and the wind's coming up from a southerly direction. Could be a bit warmer. 20, minority option, but a significant minority, with a mid-Atlantic ridge going towards Greenland, choppy through Scandinavia, and we could be introducing a colder northerly uh, wind with that one. 
We'll see. By the way, that could be a chopper spirit response of Shrap <laughs> Um Right, so we'll see whether those, um, you know, uh, that increases through the course of the week. Right, let's have a look at the CFS. Then we're done. These are 500 middle bar high times breaking down into two weeks periods. The first week period takes us from the 10th to the 16th of March. Next week, we're blocking around Green Iceland. Low pressure to our south and east. The winds again coming in from the northeasterly direction. Un uh, unsettled mix and quite cold. Well, showery and quite cold for the next few days. Week 2 is looking uh, from the 17th, 23rd of March. Looks unsettled, low pressure through the west of uh, Europe. No, uh, that's milder, but is rather unsettled. Week 3 <laughs> will be uh, the 24th to the 30th of March with high pressure over the country and the west of Europe. And then finally, week 4. It's going to be the 31st March, the 6th of April, with high pressure in the west of Europe. Lots of dry weather with that. Our winds are coming up from the southwest, so you would expect it to be reasonably warm. And uh, dry with that, so, uh, you know, definitely, <laughs> definitely not northern blocking, definitely, definitely not um, a uh, trans tropospheric spots to a strap warm, unless a strap warm is going to produce high pressure across western Europe, maybe it will. We'll see. Anyway, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you don't forget to that. Drop a comment. Let's know when you about this and all our videos and content. Don't forget to turn friends back down as well. Get to subscribe to about 25 subscribers. Gets us 19.6k. So it'd be awesome. It could give us a sub. Thank you so much, everyone. Right, tomorrow, we're going to have a 6 a.m. UK weather, weather forecast. Extended European outlook. And if that wasn't enough, it'd be a change to put day as well. So I shall see you tomorrow. But for this one, that's over now and thanks for watching.